Hello, this is John Van Wingerden with IER Regional Manager. I have with me uh, Lawrence from the uh, Birch, Birch Bay, Bay Water and Sewer. Water and Sewer. And we're going to do a demonstration of the, uh, the usage rate rate of 50% sodium hydroxide compared to 60% uh, magnesium hydroxide, which for our IER that is amalgam 60. Uh, simple, simple test. Just use some vinegar. You uh, take the vinegar and you're gonna just pour it out. I'm gonna do about 200 mils. So the reason we're using uh, vinegar, Lawrence, is vinegar is a weak acid. So it's just a and you can go to any grocery store and buy vinegar. So why reinvent the wheel and try to have some nasty chemical in stock and and you can do this. Uh, so I brought some 50% caustic and the Nogum 60. So the usage rate, in theory, for every mil of the 50% caustic, you need roughly 0.6 mils of the 60% magnesium hydroxide. Sure. So that's what we're going to demonstrate demonstrate sure. here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to we're going to pull up some amalgam here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put two mils of the caustic in here and then 1.2 mils of amalgam 60 there to uh, kind of demonstrate that that usage rate difference. This is a uh, a little handheld pH meter. Uh, I did bring some pH strips along too. If you happen to not have a pH meter, you can do all the pH strips. So we're going to add our two mils of caustic. Well, you'll notice when I added the two mils of caustic, clear, nothing there. So, what happens when you add caustic to water? The sodium and the sodium. And the, and the hydroxide ion, once they get the water, they don't like each other. They get in the water, they're free, and they just split. So you don't see any cloudiness. Where I mean, you'll see a difference here when I add the, uh, the amalgam 60. I'm going to add 1.2 mils. So I've added 1.2 mils. Now you'll notice that it's a little cloudier. So magnesium hydroxide is, we would call it a lazy chemical. It just wants to sit there until it's needed. And when, when it's needed, that hydroxide it gets pulled away from the magnesium and it reacts. So, it makes sometimes you need to have a little bit more of a, a contact period when you add it to your system. But the advantage is, I'm gonna let it sit here and stir for a little bit and then we'll take pH readings. The advantage is, I can take my glove off we would never do this with caustic soda. Yeah. There. You have no worries that it's going to give you a caustic burn or a chemical burn. Sure. So, well, now that we got some alkalinity or alkalines in our vinegar. That brought that up to 4.21. So we'll come over here to the magnesium hydroxide portion. Now we're currently sitting at 3.6 and climbing. So, like I said, we gotta give it 10, 15 minutes here and we'll see it go up. What I didn't do while we were before, which I'll show you here, let's quickly take a pH of the vinegar before we added any alkali to it. So our vinegar started at 2.8 and with two mils of caustic, we were up to 
four point four point two. How many mils of caustic is? And then how many mils of caustic? That was two mils of caustic. Two mils of caustic. And one point two mils of okay. the magnesium hydroxide. So yeah, about four point two. And this is currently sitting at climbed up to 3.93 so slowly but surely we're climbing up to pretty close pretty close that's it so that is the difference between magnesium hydroxide and uh, caustic soda for use of tree plus you now have a chemical you use less safer to handle yeah uh, magnesium is a, a more environmentally friendly ion to have floating around. Uh, magnesium is actually a key component of chlorophyll, which is everything green, plants, where sodium, you'd actually want to limit your amount of sodium if you apply in fields and in different locations. Or you guys are dumping here at Birch Bay into the uh, ocean, so it's not quite as an issue, but still the, the safety hand bit is, is a big component. Our biosolids get uh, applied to land, so okay. So there's probably uses for this also. Yeah, by applying it to land, you don't want to have that. You want to limit the uh, the sodium, the sol salts yeah. and sodium. So yeah, that's a that's a good point. Yeah, even even everybody thinks about the water going out, but never you never really think about yeah the biosolids need to be chemically in line and, and they can help with odor too. The the stuff here. Yeah, so you can use uh, one, one application of magnesium hydroxide is uh, for odor control. Okay. And and that and what basically what you do with that is you're now you you're adding it into your uh, your your force main with your water. And what that does is now you've raised your pH of your of your wastewater to a point where now it traps and doesn't allow any of that uh, that hydrogen sulfide gas that is uh, generated to come out into solution once it contact with air sure. so and you see that oh, quicker with magnesium hydroxide and that goes back to that hey, magnesium hydroxide being lazy because with magnesium hydroxide being lazy it really just not till I'm needed so not till the acid has been created does it react and, sure. and especially when you start getting above a pH of 7 yeah it, it just kind of if I'm needed I react if I'm not needed I just I'm there just and, hanging and hanging out and available so as for an odor control, that's a, it's a, a very effective way to raise that pH, but not to over raise your pH. And then what you end up doing is, now you have you've added alkalinity before you get in the plant. And now if you need an alkalinity boost in the plant, you already have some alkalinity in your wastewater. Sure. So killing two birds with one stone okay. concept. As you can see here, the longer we've gone, it's definitely becoming clearer. And we're up to right around four. So. And this is kind of stalled kind of in the four, low fours. So between the two of them, the, the usage rate. Sure. Well, thanks, Lawrence. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for showing me this. Yeah. Well, you have a good day. You too. <laughs>